The secret to your best life isn't about eliminating stress. It's about getting the right amount of stress. Did that just blow your mind? Well, there's more where that came from. We're talking with Nina Sinovia, founding director of Solanco Biofeedback Institute, and she's gonna share with us a unique theory of stress and how we can create strategies for a better, healthier life. Nina, I'm so excited because I am stressed out <laughs> Every day, I need your help. <laughs> You're like most people that are walking around that are stressed out. Sometimes I do presentations and they say, if you didn't remember how to get home last night, I'm gonna leave before you because oh that's you just on autopilot. That absolutely happens. I have to keep channeling myself and remembering, okay, where am I? Because it's so easy to just zone out on the road and I, it's like my body knows where to go. Yes. But I don't actually know. <laughs> How you in got my there. head, how I got there. Right, right. That's when you know it's it's an a, acute stress situation. Yeah. So for for me and what I do in this theory is I explain that we're all operating on three levels. Mm -hmm. We're either under stressed and underperforming. Uh -huh. And so an example of an underperforming person might be the person sitting next to you at work that has always got time to check social media or Facebook and you're thinking, I am working, yes, <laughs> yeah. I am working 15 hours and two hours just ramping up and this person has all this time. Yes. And that person that is underperforming is also creating stress. Stress is meant to get you away from a bear that you see on Colorado Boulevard. <laughs> it is not meant to keep you there forever, uh -huh. right? So the fight or flight. So a person that yeah. is underperforming in that level will actually create more stress because what they then need to move into an optimal level of stress is a goal. Uh -huh. So goal setting keeps us at a nice distance between where we are now and where we want to be. Okay. And that level of energy, that dissonance that gets us there is just enough to keep us flowing. Yeah. keep us moving forward. So if you're stagnant, if a person is stagnant or someone that is managing a person is stagnant, then setting a goal helps is the fastest way to get them to that next level. Uh -huh. Setting too much of a goal creates stress and burnout. <laughs> <laughs> too many goals. <laughs> yes. I, I can relate to that one. <laughs> yes, so we wanna make sure that it's optimal. So yeah. what happens when a person is on the uh, opposite end of that? Mm -hmm the stress and burnout in, you want to ensure that the person too knows that they can take control back of their life mm -hmm. and know that if they're showing up as their most authentic self, then that is a way to bring true balance to what they're doing and what they said they're going to do. Okay. So if a person still can't get out of that, I have initiated what is called DNA. And so I, I say to them, then you go into, what does this feel like in my body? <gasps> when I am stressed, I am not drinking as much water. I'm uh -huh. going for the sugary foods. Yes. I'm, I don't remember how I got home. Then I always activate in that moment, do not activate, DNA. Okay. So you notice in my body, this is what it feels like when I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. So I want to not activate that behavior. I want to activate a new behavior. And research has shown that gratitude is the fastest way oh. to get out of fight or flight. Wow. Gratitude. And you don't have to be grateful that, I am grateful to have a stressed boss that is now stressing me out. It doesn't have to be related. You can have a photo of family members okay. and photo of a child, photo of an experience. I often ask clients that, that I work with to get an anchor right okay. away. So kind of like I've seen, um, I can't remember what the movie was, but I was watching a movie and they had, it was a taxi driver and in her taxi car, him, him or her, they had um, a picture of like a, a beautiful place that they, yes. that they, that made them feel good. And yes. it was in the visor and they would look at that. Right. Because what we're trying to do is create an emotional response that's different than the emotional response you have when you're feeling stressed. Right. And that emotional response can then pull you out of that fight or flight. Okay. So the stress, whether it's underperforming, you have enough time to, to do all the social media when you should be working, mm -hmm. or optimum level of stress when things are just clicking, you hear people say, I was in my zone. Yeah. That's the optimal level of stress. And you can exist there every single day. Or, or when you're stressed out, maxed, and um, experiencing, about to experience or are experiencing burnout, mm -hmm. that actual anchor will ground you back into a space and place that says, I'm out of fight or flight. Any stressful moment takes you to a moment as if you are in fact about to be in a head-on collision. 
Wow. Your body is, is, is responding to provide safety to either flee or fight it. Right. Every single time that you're in stress. So when you don't remember how you got home, you really have been operating, am I fleeing or am I fighting? Am I right. fleeing? Should I expand to become bigger to fight this or should I shrink to preserve everything so I can flee it? Mm -hmm. So when you are stressed, you ultimately want to use gratitude to pull to you out of stress. Mm -hmm. So what about um, doing nice things for other people? Does it work the same way if you just kind of, you know, let's say, you find a homeless person and you give them, you know, you have, somebody had just come up with an idea to have little packets in your car to give um, to homeless people when you see them on the street. What if you do things like that? Does that kind of bring you out of that? I have not seen um, acts of kindness really reduce stress at the level that I'm talking about. Okay. I'm talking about the stress that's sending messages from your heart to your brain through your central nervous system. Yeah. That is communicating to your body to say either you need to expand to fight this or shrink to become lighter to flee this. Okay. And so we're really talking about that that the stressful situation and gratitude can't coexist in the same space. Yeah. One either has to be dominant or less dominant. So when you're a spirit of gratitude, it really overshadows and sends messages to your your subconscious mind mm -hmm. that, oh, when I am stressed, I am going to reach back to a moment in time yes. that pulls me out of this. Okay. It's a personal experience and it stops that fight or flight up the central nervous system. Okay, beautiful. So before we go, what's one really great tip for, um, for people to maintain that sense of gratitude or you know have that reminder of gratitude throughout the day as they're feeling stressed. So I use this every single day. Um, I sometimes cheat with devices uh -huh. that tell me if I'm stressed or not, but when I can't have access to that, I teach myself, I've taught myself and I teach my clients to actually do a breathing technique okay. to connect to that breath that is heart-centered because your heart has an intelligent center that is sending messages to your brain more than your brain to your body. Okay. And so I connect that to that breath and I, I say personal, my mantra is, I am grateful for the opportunity to sit with Crystal. Oh, I love that. I am grateful for the safety of a safe marriage. Nice. I am grateful for, and I do that until I start to feel the stress just melt away. You can use that technique of gratefulness in the mantra, and I hold an anchor uh -huh. with me often for any situation. It could be work-related, okay. and you can say, I am grateful for this thing. I also and use breathe it out. and yeah. breathe it out. And yeah. I also use um, foresight every single day to say, what was I grateful for today? Mm -hmm. And in the morning, I say, what am I grateful for? Uh, at night, I say, what am I, what was I grateful for today? And in the morning, I say, what am I grateful for today? And okay. I choose one thing because yeah. I don't want to burn myself out. Right. So you just pick one focal point. I pick point. one focal point and then I am grateful if I can't find something. I use that in no matter what I'm doing. Beautiful. Thank you so much for Thank those you. amazing tips. Thank you. All right.